in this class we want to solve multiple examples and the first one says for a projector the maximum range is obtained when the angle of projection is 30 degrees 45 degrees 60 degrees 75 degrees this is a direct question but before i answer or attempt it i would like us to look at the figure in this figure, we have different angle of projections. We have 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 70, and uh, 60 degrees, 75 degrees. And you can see that the angle of projection 15 degree is the same range or has the same range as the angle of projection, which is 75 degrees. And then angle of projection 30 degree has the same range with that of 60 degrees. So the one that is 45 degree has the highest range. All right. So let's come back to the question. For a projectile, the maximum range is obtained when the angle of projection is 45 degrees. Let's look at the second example. It's still on projectile, but we have to study this figure once again. The R here represents the range, OB, the range. And U here is the initial velocity. The angle theta is the angle of projection. And then look at this arrow it's telling us about the highest vertical distance the maximum height all right so it is essential that we recall their mathematical expressions including that of the time of flight time of flight those expressions are necessary Let's look at the next uh, question. This one says, the maximum height of a projectile projected with an angle of theta to the horizontal and an initial velocity of u is given by, what is the formula for maximum height? Option D is the correct option. B here is time of flight. C here is expression for range. So let us memorize it. Let's look at the next example. This one says, the range of a projectile projected at the angle to the horizontal and initial velocity is given by the range. Which one is the correct option? Option A. This other question says, the magnitude of the momentum P of an object of mass M can be related to its kinetic energy by the expression. The magnitude of momentum P of an object of mass M can be related to its kinetic energy by the expression A, P square over M, B, 3P square over 2M, C, 2P square over 3M, D, P square over 2M. Correct option is D. This one says the vertical component of velocity for a projectile motion is given by the expression. In a projectile, we have the vertical component of 
the velocity, we also have the horizontal component. We also have vertical component of distance and then horizontal component of distance. But in this case, we are looking for vertical component of the velocity. So the correct option here is option A. Please, if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, I would like you to do us a favor by clicking on the subscription button. Thank you very much. The next question here says, a constant force, F, 2i plus 3j newton displaces a body from position r1 equals to 4i minus 5j meters to r2 i plus 3j meters find the work done by the force take i dot i equals to j dot d, j equals to 1 and i dot j equals to 0 then the options a 5 joules b 8 joules c 12 joules and D, 18 joules. The question says we should find the work done. And the examples are represented in vectors. The expression for work done equals to W equals F change in R. The change in R represents the change in displacement. So we are going to simplify the change in displacement to get or obtain a single value so then we can find the dot product of this and we check if we have the correct option here all right so r2 minus r1 we substitute the values for r2 i plus 3j minus r1 for i minus 5j. When we clear the bracket, then we have this value here. Of course, you see, the, there's minus 1 here. Minus times 4i here will give us minus 4i. Minus times minus will give us plus. This one, we have a positive value outside. So even if we use it to multiply the terms in the bracket, will still give us the same expression after collecting like terms so these ones are terms with i and these ones are terms with j here we have one one minus four i here we have minus three and here three plus five will give us eight we have minus three i plus eight j so that will give us the change in displacement. We now pick the expression W equals to product of force and displacement. So the force given in the equation was 2i plus 3j times the displacement minus 3i plus 8j. When we find the dot product, and of course, this is an expression in two dimensions two dimensional vector so when we find the dot product we will have w equals to what we have here of course the ones that we that come with i like 2i minus 3i we multiply them together and then 3j and 8j we multiply them together of course remember i dot i equals to 1 j dot j equals to 1 so this i and j would vanish okay so 2 times minus 3 will give us minus 6 and this will give us 24 when you simplify the two express uh, minus two plus twenty four, you get eighteen joules as the energy or the work done. So in this case, option D is the correct option.
A box is dropped on a horizontal floor by a rope which makes an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal. Find the work done if the force 150 newton is applied to drag a box through a distance of 10 meters. Then the options 7500 joules, 750 joules, 75 joules, 7.5 joules. Okay, to find the work done, we pick an expression considering the quantities given to us. W equals to Fs cos the angle theta. Of course, the angle is 60 degrees, the force is 150 newton, and the displacement is 10 meters. When we substitute these values into this expression, we get 750 joules, which is option B. This other question is similar to the other one we solved initially. But in this case, this one is in three dimensions, but the method of solving is the same. So we are going to still use the same example. It says a particle move from a position R1 meters to a position R2 meters under the action of a force F. Find the work done. Find the work done. So we choose an expression W equals to F change in R. We are going to solve for the change in R just like the other one. So use that method. But in this case, this one is in three dimension, but the other one was in two dimension. Solve for the change in R. You collect like terms, and then we have 2i plus 4j plus 13k. So if we use this expression w equals to f change in r, of course our f is already known, i plus 3j plus k. We multiply them, i plus 3j plus k times. 2i plus 4j plus 13k, we find the, the dot product. Then we will get this. So this one with i, we multiply i with i, j with j, and k with k. That's how to do it. And then, of course, we know that i dot i is 1, j dot j is 1 k dot k is 1. So this expression will reduce to 2 plus 12 plus 13. Which will, when you add them together, you get 17 joules. Oh, sorry, 27 joules. 27 joules, which is option A. Okay. A sport car has a lateral acceleration of 1 gram, which is 1 times 9.8 meters per second equals to 9.8 meters per second square, which is the maximum centripetal acceleration attained by the car. If the car travels at a constant velocity of 144 kilometers per hour, what is the minimum radius of curve you can initiate? Looking at this question, we are being given the constant velocity or the velocity 144 kilometers per hour, but the answers are given in meters. Of course, we will quickly know that we have to convert this to meters per second so that it can align. And the acceleration here was given in gram, but in the equation, they assisted us to convert it to meters per second. So we don't have to do any further conversion. Assuming it was just in gram, then we would have multiplied 9.8 to convert it to meters per second. But in this case, it has been converted. So we have acceleration 
and we have velocity and this velocity we are going to convert then we pick an expression suitable to solve this problem so the conversion is done here the expression for centripetal acceleration a equals to v square over r we have a and v so we are going to make r the subject of the formula when we do that we have r equals to v square over a if we substitute these values directly and we will simplify it we will get 163.27 meters 163.27 meters which is the first option here option a let's consider the next example in a carnival ride the passengers travel at constant speed in a circle of radius 5 meters assume they made one complete circle in 4 seconds what is the acceleration so this one is just a direct equation we don't have anything to convert we are given the radius of the circle of rotation and the time the radius and the time of rotation we pick a formula for the acceleration 4 pi square r over t square so these ones are constants pi is a constant we have r and we have t when we simplify the values directly we get 12.34 meters per second option c The next question says, in a carnival ride, the passengers travel at a constant speed in a circle of radius 5 meters. Assuming they made one complete circle in 4 seconds, what is the velocity? A similar question to the first one, but in this case, we are to find the velocity. So, we use the expression V equals to 2 pi R over T. Then we substitute the value of R and then the value of t into the expression and then we simplify it so the correct option is option d 7.86 meters per second this one says a stationary ball is hit by an average force of 50 newton for a time of two minutes what is the impulse experienced by the body two minutes here yeah, but the answer is in seconds it's in newton seconds so of course this has to be converted to seconds so two times 60 will give us 120 in conversion we pick the expression i equals to ft for impulse for product of force and and time so the force is 50 times a time. Time is 2 times 60. Okay. So we have 120 here. When we multiply through, we have 600 Newton second, which is the correct option. The example here says, a particle of mass, 200 grams, move with a velocity of 10 meters per second calculate the momentum of the body so this one is not in kilogram but it's in grams we have to convert this to kilogram looking at the options here they are already in kilogram but in case this question is like the mass here assuming it is it it were to be in kilogram then we wouldn't have made any further conversion but in this case since it is in gram then we have to convert it to kilogram we pick an expression for momentum p equals to mv okay so in place of mass when we divide this by 1000 to convert it to kilogram we will get two so we now have 2 times 10 equals to 20 kilogram meters per second. 
So the correct option is C. This example says, a particle was projected vertically upwards such that it reached the highest height, h meters, after t seconds. If the height h is given by the equation h equals to 180t minus 3t cubed, the time taken to reach the highest height is, in fact, we are to find the time taken to reach the maximum height. And of course, at maximum height, there is no velocity. So in this case, we are going to uh, find the derivative of this, the h over the t. And of course, that derivative will give us the velocity and then we equate it to be zero then make t the subject this is what i mean solution when we find the derivative of the particle 180 t minus 3 t cube we get this value 180 minus 9 t square and of course, at maximum height, velocity is zero. So we just equate this directly to be zero. 180 minus 90 squared is equal to zero. Okay, so we are going to make t squared a subject. Of course, if I move minus 90 squared to the other side, it becomes a, posit a positive value. So we have 90 squared equals to 180. 180 equals to 90 squared, or 90 squared equals to 180. Dividing through by 9 and then simplifying. We have t squared equals to 20. When we find the square root, we have t equals to plus or minus 4 seconds. Plus or minus four seconds, please. I want you to encourage us by clicking on the subscription button. I would really appreciate. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.